His name was J. Mason Brewer. He was a collector, author, poet, historian, and teacher who was called America's most distinguished black folklorist. His roots in Texas were strong. His ancestors had fought for Texas independence, and his grandfathers were wagoners before the railroads came. At one time, his father had ridden the cattle trails to Kansas. From all of these, he heard stories of the early days of the state. His mother was a school teacher for over 50 years, and five of her six children became teachers. His sister, Stella, became an important scholar in her own right. Brewer formed an early interest in stories and tales. His mother had a deep appreciation for Negro history and literature, and in their home library, there were books on Negro history and the works of Paul Lawrence Dunbar, which Mason read as soon as he was able. When young Mason was seven years old, his family moved to Austin. While times were strict in the early 1900s, his horizons were broadened by living in the city. He had a chance to hear such black leaders of the day as W.E.B. Du Bois and Joseph Douglas, the grandson of Frederick Douglas. Times were not far removed from slavery, and in his father's barber shop, he heard stories and tales from the surrounding countryside. He began to develop a good ear for listening. In 1917, he graduated from college with a degree in languages, and after spending a short time in France in World War I, Brewer became a school teacher in Fort Worth. His early reading of Dunbar had stimulated his poetic talents, and he privately published a collection of poems entitled Echoes of Thought. A man can be what he wants to be if he'll only pay the price. He must be willing to suffer some and make a sacrifice. He can soar as high as he wants to soar if he thinks it can be done. If he believes and is confident, then half the race is run. A second volume soon followed. Like Dunbar's works, portions are in dialect. At times, the writing is purposefully humorous. You can talk about your Cadillacs and your Hudson's super fine. You can mention how they engines and they motors all a shine. You can speak about the body and the beauty of its frame. But me and my old tin Lizzie has you besters just the same. She'll take me to the city if it's raining or it's dry. Taint a mud hole that will stall her, cause her mottos do or die. You can treat her like you want. Makes no difference what you've done. With a piece of wire kindling, you can fix her so she'll run. In 1924, Brewer returned to Austin to teach English in Houston College. Mason Brewer was a good teacher. He had both energy and dedication to motivate his students. Furthermore, he loved his subject. Wherever he went, he started clubs in creative writing or history. He was always into something. And the concern was always with students bettering themselves. Austin historian and author, Mrs. Ada Simon, remembers. He always wanted every individual in the class to feel as if he could be a master. And he encouraged them to do things, especially in history and in language. He, he wanted them to write. He wanted them to record. And he wanted them to exhibit talent. He encouraged them to talk, encouraged them to say what they were thinking because he felt that there was a lot of good thinking and a lot of good thoughts and a lot of good information that they were holding back because they were not articulate and he wanted them to be able to express themselves but he he didn't teach only in his classroom he was the kind of teacher who taught wherever you were as i said if he met a child he'd say what's your name you know but he immediately by the the way in which he related to this child, he'd make him feel important. You know, what you're what you gonna be when you grow up? Was one of his maybe second or third questions on that. He was always proud and he communicated this to people he worked with. Any time he was going to be here for any length of time, he started a project of some kind that would be of a historical or heritage nature. He would find everybody, encourage everybody to let him have pictures of them, to tell them about, tell him about themselves. 
He wanted pictures of where they live, pictures of the place where they work. This was one way of making people feel important. This was one way of making people feel proud.